Good morning, RCS. Today is Thursday, January 16, 2020, and this is the RCS News. In RCS News, don't forget to sign up for bowling. Bowling will begin on February 6th, and spots are still available. Come out and join the fun. Also, coming soon at RCS is our annual spaghetti dinner and new this year's candy bingo. It is sure to be a great night. The spaghetti bingo night is on January 24th in the cafeteria and gym. Come and check out the delicious food and fun. In pet news, the Swedish audio service Spotify has made playlists and a podcast for dogs to listen to in their owner's absence after finding that nearly 74% of pet owners play music for their animals. The company said it has launched a podcast featuring soothing music, dog-directed praise, stories, and messages of affirmation and research narrated by actors to alleviate stress for dogs who are home alone. Meanwhile, playlists aimed at pets offer tracks selected by algorithms to match pets' characteristics such as energetic or slow. Spotify said it found a survey that one in four pet owners play music for their pets to listen to for company when they are away from home, with 42% of owners saying their pets have a favorite type of music. As you all know, Monday we will be celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day on Monday, January 20th. Here with some facts about MLK is Sophie Loperfito and Casey Hennigan. January 15th, 2020 marks what would have been the 91st birthday of Martin Luther King Jr., the Atlanta native who became one of the most important figures in the civil rights movement. While it would be impossible to encompass everything King accomplished in a mere list, we've, we've compiled a few intriguing facts that might pique your interest in finding out more about the man who helped unite a divided nation. Martin Luther King was not his given name. One of the most recognizable proper names of the 20th century wasn't actually what was on the birth certificate. The future civil, civil rights leader was born Michael King Jr. on January 15, 1929, named after his father, Michael King. When the younger King was five years old, his father decided to change both of their names after learning more about 16th century theologian Martin Luther, who was one of the key figures of the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther King was a doctor of theology. Using the prefix doctor to refer to King has become a reflex, but not everyone is aware of the origin of King's PhD. He attended Boston University and graduated in 1955 with a doctorate in systematic theology. King also had a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology from Morehouse College and a Bachelor of Divinity from Kozer Theology Sem Seminary. Martin Luther King made 30 trips to jail. A powerful voice for an ignored and suppressed minority, op opponents tried to silence King the old-fashioned way, incar incarceration. In the 12 years he spent as a recognized leader of the civil rights movement, King, King was arrested and jailed 30 times. A single sneeze could have altered history forever. Our collective memory of King always has an unfortunate addendum. His 1968 assassination that brought an end to his personal crusade against social injustice. But if Isola Ware Curry had her, had her way, King's mission would have ended 10 years earlier. At a Harlem book signing in 1958, Ware approached King and plunged a seven inch letter opening, opener into his chest, nearly puncturing his aorta. Surgery was needed to remove it. Had King, ha, had King so much as sneezed, doctor said the wound was so close to his heart that it would have been fatal. Martin Luther King got a C in public speaking. King's promise as one of the great orators of, of his time was late in coming. While attending Crozer Theological Seminary from 1948 to 1951, King's marks were diluted by C and C plus grades in two terms of public speaking. Martin Luther King won a Grammy. At the 13th annual Grammy Awards in 1971, a recording of King's 1967 address, Why I Opposed the War in Vietnam, took home a posthumous award for best spoken word recording. Martin Luther King spent his wedding night in a funeral parlor. When King married his wife, Coretta Scott, in her, father, father's, in her father's backyard in 1953, there was virtually no hotel in Marion, Alabama, 
that would welcome a newlywed black couple. A friend of Coretta's happened to be an undertaker and inviting the kings to stay at one of the guest rooms in, at his funeral parlor. Thanks, Casey and Sophie. Great information about a great and important man. Finally, in sports news, Serena Williams won her first big tennis championship title in three years and is using her prize money to Australian bushfire relief efforts. Williams announced her decision to donate her winnings from the competition to Australian wildfire relief efforts, a total of $43,000. Williams joins a growing list of celebrities who have brought awareness to ongoing Australian wildfires and donated money toward relief efforts. That is all for today's news. Have a great day, RCS.